Hi everybody, welcome to a beautiful spring day in Dublin. This is the 3 xe 4 and this is Street Photo Diary. We're back! So, I've actually been trying for a while to get hold of a XE4 and it's actually been surprisingly difficult to get here in Ireland because of shortages. And But I finally got one a few weeks ago and so far I'm pretty happy with it. But what I'm trying to find out is, is this going to replace my Sony A6000 as my preferred street photography camera? So, let's find out. So I'm mostly shooting with the 35mm 1.4 today and this is actually quite an old lens now and I've had this since the Fuji X-Pro1 which is quite a bit of time ago now. Um, but it is still the best Fuji lens that I have and probably one of the best out there. Um, in terms of the camera, I'm pretty happy with it. There's only kind of one thing that annoys me about it and that is there's kind of this bug. It's not really a bug, it's a feature. I like to shoot from the hip with the screen pointed up and it's one of the things that I loved about the Sony A6000 and kind of one of the reasons I went with the XE4 because it has a similar um, setup where you can flip the screen up however there's some drilling going on so <laughs> let's just wait la, 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 la. so yeah so one of the things I like about this is to be able to flip the screen up however if you hold it too close to yourself um, the image reverses because it's the same mechanism that allows you to flip the screen forward and unfortunately the problem with that is whatever sensor they have in the eye um, that actually causes the display on the screen to flip upside down and that's really annoying. Okay so back in the studio because that was turning into a bit of a disaster with the noise and the drilling and the everything. What else about the XE4? You know, it's a nice compact camera and that's kind of one of the things I look for in a street photography camera. Um, it's very well built. The image quality is great. Um, I mean, the Fuji image quality is pretty much a known commodity at this point. So in terms of settings, I generally shoot in aperture priority. Um, and what I've been doing is I use auto ISO and set the minimum um, shutter speed reasonably high um, to about 250. And then if I want to override that, if I'm still getting a bit of blur, um, what I'll do is I will just manually set it on the camera because you've just changed the dial. So yeah, so I mean, this isn't a full review or anything. Um, I just kind of wanted to give you an overview of what I thought about it for um, shooting street photography. It's been perfect. I haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. Like I said, apart from the flip up screen thing, um, but yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's a good camera. I want to close my eyes and go back Play it in my mind A movie of us two, yeah, we were 
happy at the time Can't remember what it felt like We used to be so strong That picture perfect sky now It looks so great cold We've been playing here since 4 a.m. And you haven't said a word to me One of the reasons I kind of wanted to try the XC4 II in comparison to my uh, old Sony is that while I love the Sony for street photography, it, it really is my favorite street photography camera. I do love the colors of Fuji, um, or that you get with Fuji which I know is kind of ironic for this video because I've been shooting them all in black and white. Um, but that's another thing, you actually get really nice black and whites from um, the Fuji sensors as well. Generally, I like kind of prefer to use color for street photography, but there's something about these that just kind of worked better in black and white. Um, and I think it's kind of, when you shoot in black and white sometimes, it, there's an almost abstraction from the scene that makes it look uh, more kind of that it's, you're creating more of an artistic interpretation of what you're seeing rather than it being more documentarian, um, which, you know, it's, it's kind of one of those arty things that most people don't even bother thinking about on a daily basis. Um, but yeah, it's not something that I'm, specifically ideological about it. Um, I actually generally prefer to shoot in color, but just this kind of works. Um, I used my own Lightroom presets on these, um, and it is my T-Pan set. And I've actually gone out another day as well and shot some more, and so let's take a look. much it for this episode of Street Photo Diary. I hope you have enjoyed it and thanks for sticking with it this far. It's actually been quite a while since I've done one of these. Do you believe it was 2019 was the last one? I wonder what happened over the last two years that could have stopped me shooting street photography. So it didn't really feel right while people were kind of going through this thing and you know everybody was stressed and everybody was upset and I didn't want to be the guy walking around putting a camera in people's faces. It just, it just didn't feel right. 
I don't really see my street photography as kind of documentarian. I see it more as art. So, you know, if you were at shooting news pieces or, you know, preserving history, then absolutely perfectly fine. And I think that's perfectly reasonable. But for me, just, it just didn't feel right. And it wasn't something, I didn't want to be that guy. So that's kind of why I stopped doing it. But the downside of that is I kind of got out of practice. <laughs> so, you know, it's one of those things, it's not like riding a bike. You actually do kind of lose, um, you lose your nerve if you're not practicing it regularly. It's taken me a little bit of time to get back into it. So I know this probably hasn't been the best episode of Street Photo Diary, but I do want to thank you for sticking with it. And hopefully I will get to do lots more of these in the future. Um, so yeah, so if you have liked this, please like, share and subscribe. You know the drill. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. See you next time.